Hi everyone, Assalamualaikum and Salam Sejahtera. I'm your moderator for this live talk sharing event. So this is my first time to moderate a live event in a public platform, so I feel a little bit nervous. So okay, let's start our event of today. Today, we are very honored to invite two CEO for two different industry backgrounds. And one of them is actually from a famous corporate, while another one is from a startup company. Then you might be curious, like how come a corporate and a startup company will stand together in this event? So this is the chemistry of today. Both of them will be sharing about their industry impact during this COVID-19 pandemic in the perspective of a corporate and also of a startup. So by the end of this event, we will also share about uh, the benefit that you can gain as a micro SME or SME during this MCO and after this crisis. So stay tuned, don't go away. 那今天我们非常的荣幸可以请到两位总裁那一位呢是来自嘉裕户小的大企业另外一位呢是来自初创企业那最特别跟最奥妙的地方就是他们两个会站在不同的企业规模的角度去分享和去告诉你们他们在这
right? First thing is that they refuse to go to an ATM machine to go and key in and, 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 and withdraw cash. The second thing is they felt that, you know, the using cash as a mode of, of payment, you know, you're, you're, you're paying 50 ringgit and you're collecting back a couple of 10 ringgits back, change, coins, they felt a bit uneasy about it. So the, the cashless portions, the e-wallet has come into play quite, quite strongly. And that also has spurred um, merchants, especially the SME merchants, the micro SME merchants, the guys that actually sells the noodles, the curry laksas, they're still operating during this period of time. They have actually called upon us and say, hey, you know what? Get us the QR code. In fact, I'll be very frank with you. Let me share with you this. The other day, I think, was it on Saturday, I actually went to this shop to get myself a couple of yimi, you know, the, the fried noodle kind of thing. And I asked the lady, you know, I, of course, being the CEO of Touch and Go e Wallet, I, I say, hey, you guys accept or not? And he said, oh, not yet, not yet. We've been trying to get the QR code. So I've got my guys to actually go and quickly expedite it. But that lady was really smart, right? She looked at me and said, you, you know what? I'm your user as well. You can pay to pay the money to me. So it was not a merchant QR code that was displayed at the store. But that person spoke to me and said, look, I give you my phone number. You just keep it into my, you know, my e Wallet itself. And her name comes out and I show it to her and say, she says, yeah, 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 that's the number. So I transmitted about 60 more ringgit to her for the purchasing of the couple of stuff that I needed to. So I think people are really adapting to it. And in fact, creatively thinking of ways and means to expedite even without the QR code in their shop. So I, I think um, the, the new norm is going to set in. We hope MCO will be lifted by end of this month. Uh, if you ask me personally, I think probably better to have it extended for one more period. But having said that, when that MCO is lifted, ultimately, I think people's lifestyle will change. People are now introduced to, you know, food delivery, uh, groceries delivery. I think moving forward, I think that will become a new norm. Hence, I, I believe that the landscape has changed quite drastically in the last four weeks, and it will have that halo effect moving forward in the next couple of months to see. So that's how I see it impacting us, especially and the key ones. Like, all right, so uh, I can really know about the behavior changing is actually from the payments. So how about Lens as a bootstrap startup? Any major impact during your uh, MCO in your industry? Well, the impact, uh, frankly speaking, is actually quite drastically happened to the whole uh, ecosystem. So since uh, we are come from a startup background, so we are playing a very much into the startup ecosystem. Uh, during this time, I can consider that it's quite a tough time for a lot of startup or small SME. So, um, of course, for the startup, we always pivoting our business, you know, how to uh, get challenge ourselves to uh, go through all these challenges. Of course, uh, as a startup, this is part of our DNA. Uh, of course, we I will explain later what's the major impact will happen in our industry. Uh, but I need to look into a more global landscape, uh, not because this uh, pandemic uh, disease not only happened in Malaysia, it's actually happened in the global. So what we can see right now, as just now initial also mentions, a lot of behavioral change already happens. Things are getting into, you know, delivery, food delivery, all these things. Uh, because people are really afraid, uh, afraid of a human contact. And um, mass places, uh, mass crowded places, people will try to avoid because they might afraid to get uh, infections. Uh, thanks to also the government initiative, I also agree with uh, Ignatius. Uh, lockdown is something uh, quite essential because uh, for short term wise, um, it, it may see a very deteriorate. But if we don't uh, have an enforcement on this uh, period, it actually will trigger more issues. So um, I would say that this uh, new trigger, new way of business doing or is already started to cultivate. And we already see this uh, new consumption behavior is started to nurture. So what is uh, most importantly is that uh, we want to capture these uh, new behavior cultures and tackle on these uh, ecosystems. Uh, besides the work, uh, I mean, work from home also another way uh, people also, uh, how they work in, uh, they used to go to the work in office. Now everyone also switched to the work from home. Uh, remote working, I can say that becomes a new culture. So all of these uh, factors become a uh, very vital for us to look into how this can be impact in the current and also for the futures. So uh, for vending machines, since our products are very much associated with uh, FMCG or grocery products, I would say that our, uh, our industry still have a very positive impact because uh, FMCG products are something of uh, daily necessity demand by the publics. Uh, but in general, I would say that uh, because our industry very much associated with FMCG, FMCG, which is part of the retailing business, uh, offline retailing business, uh, sadly to say that they are suffering a lot. 
Right. So uh, overall, I can actually feel that uh, become cashless and also become automated sounds is quite positive impact after the social distancing and MCO. So uh, don't talk about the general user, talk about the user of your company and your industry. Have you seen any shifting behavior on those users happen? Maybe I give the mic to the initials. You mean our existing user who is really using Touch & Go e-wallet? Yes, your existing user, is it their adoption become high and the transaction become more after this crisis? Okay, okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll be very frank. Uh, the transaction has come down and that's also because of the fact that the, the various merchants that we have on board, eh, half of them, at least more than half of them, is no longer in operations at this point in time. But we do see that there are people who have, for example, certain users who are used to be our toll users only have now shifted to actually started to use our Touch & Go e-wallet to start paying for their prepaid top-ups. They have started to use our wallet to pay their bills, their water bills, uh, you know, even Astro bills, NTN, Unify and all that. And, 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 and we realize that some of these guys, and, and we look at our demographics, right? And we see that some of these guys are above 50 years old. And, and, and this, this group of users naturally has always liked to go to the uh, post office to do the bill payment. But since that is no longer an option, they have been compelled to start using technology, in this case, the Touch & Go e-wallet, to actually start paying all these necessities and bills and whatnot. So yeah, there is a shift. And, and you know, I'll be very frank with you, if given a normal time, a normal instance, if I try to educate our users, and I'll be very frank, you know, my dad is one of them. He's, he's close to 80 years old, trying to get him to use the e-wallet. Oh my God, it's, 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 just, it's, it's just uphill task. Right, but when you have environment change like the MCO, you know, I'm not saying this is a good thing, but there's always opportunities within the crisis itself, and and we realize that there are people who start to pivot, there are people who start to have behavioral change, and it's for, probably for the better because now they look at it and say, hey, you know what, I used to drive all the way out to the post office to do this kind of errands, and now I can do it in the comfort of my own home. Now moving forward, when MCO is lifted, when COVID-19 is rid of, uh, you know, globally. Um, there are certain behavior change will continue to sustain itself. And that's where we start seeing this kind of thing. Uh, prepaid top-ups, uh, people used to go to convenience store. Don't get me wrong, convenience store are also our partners, 7-Eleven and Speedmark 99s, KK Marts and all, and all. But these guys who used to go there to do their top-ups, they have started to use the e-wallet itself for the top-ups. And of course, you know, we, we do once in a while run certain campaigns and we are also working very hand-in-hand with our partners. For example, in the top-up bar, is actually one of our partners who actually does all this top-up for prepaid and postpaid. And they actually see a bit of benefit because when they do the top-up on our platform, they do get one or two regular kind of cashbacks and whatnot. So uh, they, they, they realize the convenience. I think that's the key uh, message that we want to actually deliver our users. It's not always cashback. It's never always cashbacks, right? When you use cash, when you drive your car out to find a 7-Eleven to do a top-up, you actually spend more money on the fuel, you know, driving a car out of the way and tear and the time wasted. But, you know, doing it on the wallet, doing it in the comfort of one home, it makes a lot more sense. So I think that's where we started to see uh, within our users, even strong loyal users, they have pivoted to actually start using certain functionality in the app that they have never touched before. Online payments. So that's key. Prepaid. Uh, and then we have partners, for example, like Deliver Eats. Uh, we have partners like uh, MyCard. So they are actually using a lot more uh, with us in the sense that they are paying for the Deliver Eats, so food delivery going to their homes uh, with us using the e-wallet. Because the fact is, some of these guys do not really have a credit card. Yes, everyone has may, may have a debit card, but Having said that, they like the fact that the e-wallet is in there. They can actually manage the transactions. They know exactly how much they're paying for. So again, that is a massive mindset change. And I think the behavioral change will come along really, really smoothly around this period. So yeah, there is good part to it. Uh, that's not so good part. The negative portion is actually a lot more of our other merchants that is not in the essential business. It's not really doing well. But I think those will automatically come back when MCO is lifted. But I, the, the the education process of our users has been expedited uh, exponentially. Wow. So uh, there's always good and bad and pros and cons. So we can hear from the initials, which is the payment behavior already have both side impact. How about the lens, your industry user shifting behavior? 
I would say that I'm, I'm quite excited to hear from the initiates uh, to talk about all this uh, cashless uh, uh, society. Uh, this, all this is actually very much associated with our products as well, which is our uh, e-wallet betting machines. Uh, in fact, that when people are actually get used to all these uh, cashless, uh, or we call it e-wallet payment, uh, it's actually smoothened the process of the, the, the transactions and all these sort, all sort of this uh, uh, promotion actually gives a very good benefits back to the merchant as well. Um, in fact, uh, shitting behavior is actually happened uh, quite drastically uh, among our clients and also from the end user uh, consumption level. So what I can see from here now is that um, uh, it's actually had a very huge contrast conditions for the consumption way. And uh, the, the difference we can see here is quite extreme. Uh, let me put an example, the vending machines that, that are placing at the public places like universities or the government institute, they are actually experiencing a zero sales for their entire months. So this is a, some uh, very uh, drastically uh, ex uh, result that we can see right now. Um, but what we can see from the, the other, on the other hand, uh, vending machines that are placing uh, close to the residential or the lockdown places such as the condominium, they are still performing, which is surprisingly that uh, because all these places, uh, which is very much underrated, uh, that perspective from the vending operator, now they become uh, one of the good places. Um, what I can say right now is that the retailing business, because since our products are very much uh, associated with uh, retailing business as well, uh, the retailing business right now who actually sell their business at the retail uh, retail shop or the business park or shopping mall, uh, what I can see right now is they actually suffer a lot. A lot of from a perspective of rentals or OPEX on a human resource. Uh, even right now, um, they are already suffering. But the question would be, what if the, the MC already lifted? Would, that, would they still sustain in the a couple of months or not? This is something very challenging. So, but what I can see here is that a vending machine becomes one of the alternative uh, options. Uh, I might, I might not saying uh, it is one of the only, uh, but it, it is somehow a very good option because of to replace on the OPEX issues, HR issues, and also the lower rental, uh, the the condition for that. So, uh, since vending machines has very much a, a dynamic adaptability uh, on any any condition, I would say that it gives a very good opportunity for the vending operator to, to capture the new ways of how the business can be doing. So, because of this, all of this uh, shift of behavior, it becomes a result a new way of a uh, business conduct. So, this is allows a uh, vending operator to have a new strategy to tackle new ways. So, in fact, that uh, like what Inisha say that all this um, uh, cultivate, uh, cultivations process is already ongoing by the mass public in terms of adoptions of all uh, e-wallets. Uh, I would say that uh, would be something uh, very beneficial uh, back to the uh, offline retailing uh, at one day. But at this moment, of course, the uh, challenge is quite high. Uh, it just would take some time to buffer for these uh, challenges. All right. So actually in Malaysia, we can see that our Malaysia government trying to help people by launching several economic stimulus package or programs. But mostly, they are focused on people instead of companies, especially for startups, micro SMEs, small medium enterprise. So as a CEO, you have the role advantage to make the initiative in helping your customer or user during this crisis. Uh, are there any initiatives you are planning or you already done to help your customer during this pandemic? Uh, I would like to hear from, hear from the initiates. Okay, uh, so essentially during the MCO period, the guys that is really, really needing a lot of assistance are the SMEs, the micro SMEs itself. So you heard about me, what I've talked about just now, uh, the guys that operates out of the coffee shops, the guys that have the grocery stores. I mean, we're talking about the mom and pop grocery stores as well. Um, we are actively actually getting the listing and we are calling them. So we used to actually onboard these guys at field level, at ground level. We basically have people going into the stores and explain to them, you know, what is the, what's the benefit of having the e-wallet QR code. And now I think that education process has been expedited, like what I said earlier on. So in essence, we don't really need to spend much time. In fact, a lot of people are knocking on our door. Some are even sending in emails to us and saying, hey, you know what? My store is in Sitiya Alam. Could you get someone to, you know, I'll submit in whatever documents that you need to, you know, my SSM documents and all that. When can I get a QR code? So that's, that's a great thing. And that helps that education process a lot more faster. So we've got an SME team in our company that is actually actively doing this. So we are generating the QR codes, we're sending it out to them. 
Um, we tried a couple of ways. Electronically, we, we send an email to them, and what we can tell them, you know, print it out if you have a printer, and then stick it onto the on, on, onto your, your your premise. Now, the other ones is a smaller ones that really doesn't have a printer. So what we do is we actually uh, um, um. employ a services of a partner, a logistic partner, to have our POSM sent to them as well. Now, we found that this is good, it's ongoing, but the process is a little bit long. So what we do is, I've always believed in what we call uh, smart partnerships. So we are starting to work with certain, well, I call it aggregators, but these guys are really out to support the SMEs. So uh, I, I, I can come up with a couple of names, like Go Eat is one of them. Uh, Store Hub, which has actually started running this website called bibbeat.com, right? He has accumulated about 400, especially FNB uh, SME merchants, right? So uh, I'm not going to talk about the big boys like, you know, Grab Food and Food Panda. Uh, some of these SME merchants find the charges a little bit more expensive working with these guys. Uh, hence, they are now working with people like Store Hub. They're working with people like, for example, Go Eat, where their whole game plan is to keep and sustain the SMEs. And these are the group of SMEs that you really need to sustain because they do not have a huge capital base behind them. And if the next couple of weeks, if the extension of MCU is going to be extended, it's going to have a very, very huge strain on your cash flow. So what they do is they actually onboard these guys onto them. And they basically create a marketplace, a platform for them and say, look, uh, the guys that sells prawn noodle in SS2 coffee shop, you know, the I don't know which name it is, like, right? And he just signs up with bidit.com. And what happens is someone will go into bidit.com. He does the selection and he says, okay, I, today I want to have my prawn noodles. He select like three packs at more sambal for myself, definitely more sambal and all the kind of nonsense, right? And they accept the payment on their behalf. And then these guys will send a message to that that person to prepare the three packs of noodles and will also send the logistic companies, the, the guy who does the delivery, to come and collect and send it to the buyer. So I think it's all about smart partnerships. We are doing things directly and trying to onboard these guys directly, but it is quite straining. It, it quite, it's quite strenuous. So at the same time, in parallel, we're working with uh, partners like these guys and we're trying to work with more and we're trying to even get more people to get involved. So some of the things that if you notice, Ramadan is this week, you know, it's actually Friday, it's going to start. Uh, you, you heard all these ministers, one minister saying drive through, one minister saying no. And then KKM has finally stood in, thank God, and said, you know what? There's no going to be e, any e-bazaar, whatever form. But what we are now trying to do is we know that these guys need to get themselves on board because they, they, they need to sustain themselves. So we are we have the list of names, the e-bazaars, the, 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 the Malay, the, the, the Ramadan e-bazaars guys, and we are actually sharing this list with these partners itself and say, hey, get them onboarded during this period, right? And that's how we are trying to move and and and, and sustain everybody within the ecosystem. Because ultimately, if we can't go through this next couple of weeks together and making sure that this guy sustain itself, you're gonna see a lot of people dropping off. So your, you know, I was just funnily this this afternoon, I was just talking to some of my colleagues in the office, and they say, you know what, if if this MCU is gonna be extended for another two more weeks, you know, my favorite pan mi store is gonna be gone. I mean, we, we laughed about it, but it's true, it's really true. So that's where us as a payment service provider on a contactless basis is coming in to support these SMEs quite quite strongly. And that's where we try to group together the aggregators like the, you know the likes of Go Eats and the likes of uh, Store Hub together and get the merchants together together as well. I think that's 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 our role in here. Of course, it's good for us. We we, we create more awareness. We get more people to have a lot more traction using the e-wallet to do payments. But I think like you know to, to the same point like what Lan said, right? It's all about making sure we take advantage of this current crisis period and make the best out of it. Okay, so how about technology? Do you have any initiative? Because uh, as a startup, I, I know that uh, corporate can a lot of initiative they can done. Then how about startup? Is this startup also got initiative during this period? Well, I have to go back to fundamental of uh, what our industry is doing. Uh, basically, we are doing the vending in industry, right? So basically, what I'm 
planning to do is to foster into the vending ecosystem for the retailing uh, uh, businesses because what the uh, retailing businesses uh, like um, uh, Nisha say that uh, is actually facing a really tough time because uh, in this uh, pandemic, we can see that online users or online ecosystem are doing pretty well. Um, uh, even though they are not well, but they still can sustain and go through all these uh, tough situations. But offline, they had to stop their business complete in a complete way. So uh, we play as uh, automated uh, players in, in the vending industry. We have to, you know, think about how we really can help this uh, micro SME or the SME in a very different way. Like um, uh, partnerships are being done by also a touch and go with uh, multiple of the companies. Uh, same goes to us. We also thinking about the partnerships to with all the potential uh, digital ecosystem players that can actually create more value back to the SME and, and also the micro SME. So our objective is to make a difference right now in terms of a, a few uh, factors, which is uh, OPEX, human resource, and also the rental, which is these three added up is uh, already taking up very much uh, of their profits that they made. So what I can say that currently, who is our client? Of course, our client is a vending operator because we are playing the role of a manufacturing of a smart vending machine to sell to the vending operator. But fundamentally, we have to think about how we really can help the vending operator to make a great uh, revenue at the same time, still can uh, sustain and grow in the futures. Uh, what the sub, I mean, what the planning that we are going to help our client is that to give a consultations and also give some subsidy, especially of new adoptions of a new uh, from a different backgrounds. So basically, we also can uh, separate into two uh, entities, uh, which is come from micro SME backgrounds of, uh, and also on the other is a SME. So micro SME is someone who actually relatively new to the business. Uh, they might not even not forget about just a vending industry. They might even uh, new to the business as well. So what they're going to do is that they are find that a vending machine is a, one of the innovative uh, tools to to uh, scale the business. Uh, while I can say that this group of people they are very uh, lack of direction and don't know how to kickstart the business. So we actually play a very important role to help them to help them to onboard to play a very vital role in the uh, as, uh, in the retailing business. So while the SME also play a very different role, uh, they used to have already established products or established businesses. So what they use uh, from the, what they play in the vending industry role is that they use a vending machine as a, as a tools uh, to substitute their stores, you know, from a, a kiosk or the retailing business. Eventually what they want to sell is just their products, not the, not the store itself. So uh, a lot of uh, businesses that are trying, you know, cultivate on the experience are actually facing a very difficulty uh, just like you know starbucks people go to starbucks not just really want to buy the 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 what we call the coffee but in fact they want to enjoy the environment in fact i believe that they already will have a, some impact in their business so all of this is already you know already started to change people wants the needs not the uh, not the wants um, a lot of things already uh, shifted the way how the business is doing. So I would say that uh, we actually given a very good uh, uh, the way to help the offline retailing business in the new ways. So uh, what of course, what's the things we actually provided here is uh, we provide a subsidy for our new vending operator to uh, onboard them into a new uh, business line. So this actually will create a new value in the upcoming futures. Uh, of course, uh, I'm not going to explain more about that. Maybe if you're interested, just log on to our Facebook or our website to look for more information. Uh, ultimately, what our goal is to encourage an uh, offline business to think twice before if you really want to scale again in the business, in retailing business. Think about what's the other options other than the retailing stores. So uh, we hope that uh, by giving, uh, our, our play a very important role to give uh, alternative uh, options to help the retailing business in a more uh, effective way in the future. Okay, so all the three questions just now that we are talked uh, is mostly about the behavior in terms of payment and also retailing. So can you forecast the opportunity and also the benefit that your merchant customer will gain if let's say after this crisis, they join into your industry? For example, a traditional business owner, they really want to, after this crisis, make into cashless so they don't have the interaction between the cash and coin and also they would like to transform their uh, traditional business to automated. So what is the opportunity and benefit that you can forecast? Uh, Initius, do you forecast anything? Uh, well, uh, running that touch and go e-wallet, of course, we <laughs> forecast that there will be a lot more people having a lot more stickiness and traction using our wallet. 
But let, let, let's not talk about Touch and Go e-wallet per se. Let's talk about the merchants itself. So, for example, because of the existing environment and, and with the MCO that's in place, um, a lot of merchants has been, in one way or another, being pushed into the sphere of food delivery, right? And I believe that a lot of these guys have now seen a different opportunity within their own business. For example, uh, I, I'm not going to do advertisement for you know some of our F&B merchants. <laughs> like, but if anyone who lives in PJ, you will know of this Hokkien noodle store that is near uh, oh, Jalan Tututu. Okay, I won't name his name, lah, but I think everyone will know who I'm talking about, right? And they never used to do food delivery. Now, because of the fact that MCO is in place and, you know, Malaysians just love Hokkien noodles, they have actually put a sign on outside their, their, their coffee shop and says that, you know, this is the phone number. We operate between, I can't recall, I think 4 p.m. to about 7 p.m. And that's where they do all the fry and everything. And, you know, call this number, come and pick it up, and that I don't think they work with an aggregator. I don't think they work with a logistic company to do the delivery, but they do have the pickups, right? So you think about it now. When MCO is lifted, they realize that there'll be people that they're serving to come into the restaurants and eat the Hokkien noodles there. But there will be people who continue to actually make delivery order via the phone, calling them. And they will see that their top line revenue has just easily doubled or tripled. Because the fact is, if you're just operating like what lands, you're operating on an offline model, you have to have high, huge rental costs. You are uh, actually constrained by the real estate of the coffee shop that you have in. So if there's going to be 10 tables, it's going to be 10 tables. Worst thing is you have one or two tables of people who's just drinking beer for the whole bloody night and they're not moving away. You do not have that crossover. You do not have the turnover of the table. But that's as much as you have. You only have the 10 tables and you probably have about three or four turnovers per night. But now that you have ventured into food delivery, all you need to do is get another couple of guys, train another couple of guys who fry the noodles as good as it tastes by the main guy. And now you just double or triple your sales. I think that's where people will start to realize that even during these kind of instances, during this kind of environment or crisis, you call it, right? Uh, you have learned something new. You have actually just ventured into something that you always believe that I don't really need to. And hence, I think that's how people can start to do double, triple in terms of their top line revenue, in terms of their sales. And I'm not just talking about SMEs, right? I'm also talking about, for example, pharmaceuticals, pharmacies. Um, they have started to do deliveries as well. So, and we being in the in 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 the you know e-wallet space, we have dealings with clinics as well, and 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 also pharmacies, and also the big boys like the the guardians and the Watsons and the caring. But we're also talking about the mediocre ones, you know, the AA pharmacies and big and all that. You, and this is where during this environment, this this period, people are starting to. Now I don't know about you, I I don't do it right, but a lot of people start to take supplements, you know, for no reasons. They're taking vitamin C's, vitamin D's, mm -hmm. and, and and just triple it right and. And you may have some people who have uh, OCD and say, you know what, I'm not going to go to the pharmacy to buy my, my supplements. I'll continue the existing way, which is get things delivered. And hence, with us, we will pivot that kind of relationship to now together with, for example, with clinics. You will have some guys who goes into clinics just for checkups every month just to do their you know, uh, blood pressure, just to check, you know, this kind of thing. That kind of, well, we, we call the word kiasu, lah, but having said that, there will be a lot of these guys. And what we're trying to say is, these guys, we know they're doing transactions with us, and we're trying to see how we can link this up with a pharmacy that actually will actually um, 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 address their needs in getting their supplements. So I think that's where we come into the play and see how we can actually pull the relationships together and make it a lot more stronger, but at the same time, delivering the kind of convenience, the kind of value add to the user itself. Um, so businesses really, really need to take advantage of this period and start seeing, hey, there is another alternative, there is another channel. Like Lion said, you know, you may even look into a vending machine that actually does and enables you to actually distribute your products in a wider range, and you are not, you are not constrained by uh, nine to five. You need someone to be in the shop. You don't need to. So I think this is where people have to start thinking the time when you're working from home, when you're on MCO, start to explore what are the different things that people can do and try it this time because everyone's just going to try it. 
Yes. So as a business owner, actually, user is getting more and more uh, convenient and you're getting more and more lazy, like so called. So you I are a <laughs> you are business owner, so you have to think about the user pain point That's and right. see how you can make it more convenient. So how yeah. about freelance, your forecasting opportunity? If let's say they join in the vending industry after this crisis. Um, all right. Um, what I can say that uh, if they really join into the vending industry, uh, they are actually taking the advantage for the futures. Uh, because uh, like we we always say that you know industry four point the IoT tech, all these uh, all te technological things. But uh, uh, but one of the challenges here is that a lot of people when think about the technology, people will say that oh this sounds great. You know, um, it's not the time yet. But in fact, that this is really uh, the, the technology created is to serve the market with a purpose. And that's uh, where the vending machine also play a very vital role in here. So because of uh, this pandemic uh, crisis, uh, eventually what we can experience right now, of course, is quite a challenging because uh, we always see that uh, a lot of market is constrained in terms of uh, investment, pay our capital investment into uh, a, new a new type of asset. But what we want to say is that uh, something uh, after the COVID-19, the how the retailing is going to change the landscape uh, by the by the how the vending machine can be impact into. So this is uh, some of the things we I really want to uh, encourage the new user uh, who act in the current offline retailing. Not just look at the uh, not just look at the what we call the e-commerce platform, but also look it into other the innovative retailing tools that can uh, uh, make the business even more better. Because eventually, uh, future is all about digitally connected. People who can buy the things from online also can buy from offline. It becomes a you know omni channel to access for the users to have a multiple options to purchase the things. Uh, but I, here I would like to share one of the very good example that um uh what we what the customer will gain uh, after this crisis is that um uh, in two thousand eight uh, there's one of the uh, global crisis economy global crisis. Of course, uh, right now this time is quite exceptional because it's a uh, considered a health crisis plus the economic crisis. So it's actually even worse than 2008. Uh, but what we can see right now that time is that uh, after 2008, a lot of uh, new businesses are actually a new opportunities that uh, stand to boom in the market. Um, for example, the e-commerce at times, uh, you know, people always think about that, oh, e-commerce is something great, you know, uh, you can buy things from online because it's so effective to, to transfer the good from the seller to the end user through the delivery. But in fact, that uh, after that time, uh, eventually a lot of retailing business become a culprit again during that time for the retailing business their business couldn't you know uh have has to close down or you know have to pivot the business eventually the time uh this e-commerce coming at a uh, very cost effective method to help to buffer the conditions uh, same goes to right now what we can see now is the it's true that the e-commerce is already helping you know uh people to deliver goods from the online from seller to the end user but people never think about what's the role the offline can play a very important role, which is by using a technological things such as vending machines. So I would say this is a shuffling time. A lot of business, you know, uh, some go bankrupt or some might be boom. So what we can, what we want to say here is uh, just prepare yourself in the next two years. What is going to, you know, the next giants uh, that might be growing uh, in the markets. So just be prepared and uh, take advantage of what the economy, uh, I mean, what's the opportunity in the upcoming. Uh, it's true that the economy right now looks so bad. A lot of things uh, look so, uh, it's so, so serious. And, uh, but once it rebounds, I would say that are you the one of it to steer the market and, uh, you know, right on the way to grow into the new futures. All right, so it's very interesting and precious insight from Initius and Lens. So for all the audience here, actually, they can hear the insights and also the voice from different industry, from an e-payment company and also for a vending industry companies. So there is actually plenty of questions asked by the audience uh, since the beginning of the live talk. So I will choose some of the questions for our Q&A session later. Now, I will choose some of the questions for our Q&A session later. Now, I will choose some of the questions for our Q&A session later. So before I will share this question, if you are going to transform your uh, traditional retailing business to an automated and also cashless business, so here you will gain the support from Touch and Go and Technology by using a Touch and Go vending machines. So, uh, if you would like to know about more vending machines, please comment e wallet vending. 
Okay, you comment e-wallet lending and then we will have a person in charge to PM, private message you about the details. Uh, actually, Vagnology have some subsidy and also Touch and Go has some cashback maybe. So please uh, comment e-wallet lending and later on we will send you the things. So I already uh, have some questions here. Would like to ask uh, Ignatius and Lance. Lah. Mm, okay, one of the questions they ask, what if e-wallet payment often encounters server down and can't process e-payment oh my god <laughs> he asked like what if la, the touch and go always down then like what happened for a merchant always down then it's not good for our business uh, got problem so do we have anything i think the question is i think I, 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 I let the initials to answer because those are famous <laughs> process <laughs> yeah, yeah, to do yeah, with yeah. Machine. Yeah. Uh, i i speak from facts right um and, and, and I know for a fact, for Touch & Go e-wallet, our system uptime is, at, we have a very, very strong SLA, which is about 99.3%, and that's our SLA. As far as we are concerned, we want to ensure, and we make sure, and not just uh, ensure, we make sure and assure our users that our uptime is always at above 99.3%. So, yes, there may be one or two times, but that would not, not happen all the time. So, rather than talking about exception cases, let's talk about the things that we are doing to ensure that our uptime is always there. So, for that matter, you have my assurance that based on the last two years operations that we had, uh, touch and go e-wallet until now, our uptime has always been above the 99.3%. So I think that's that's the kind of shares we want to give it to our users as well. So um, I don't think people need to worry. I, I just want to re-emphasize, a lot of people fail to realize who we are. Um, touch and go name by itself. I think every Malaysian would have said the word touch and go in their lifetime. This is like the Garaku, right? Touch and go has always has been in this country for the last 20 years. Uh, the other portion of it is that you need to know who is our shareholders? Who's the guy who's funding this company? So we have our uh, uh, parent company, which is Touch and Go, which is also 100% owned by CIMB, which is you know one of the biggest bank in Malaysia. And the other side of it is actually owned. 49% is held by N Financial. So just in case people doesn't know who is N Financial, N Financial is part of Alibaba Group. N Financial is the company that operates Alipay, which is the biggest e-wallet in the world. So think about it. We have that kind of leverage. We have that kind of experience. And we have that kind of platform that we are utilizing, which is the same one as Alipay. That's where we are damn confident that whatever we do, we ensure and assure our users that our time is always there. So we are not some fly-by-night kind of uh, you know e-wallet that you, you hear about outside in, in the market. We are definitely one who is going to be here. And I'll be very frank with you. Who we are is that we will be the e-wallet that's going to transform and bring Malaysia into the cashless society in the next one year. So that's who we are. A, wow. bit, a, a bit arrogant, a bit arrogant, but yeah, you know what? We believe in our brand. <laughs> Maybe later you can see a lot of angry icon later. <laughs> oh, uh, that, that will be throwing me kisses and likes, uh, I'm sure. <laughs> There's another question. Um, most of the people are afraid of using touchscreen vending machines, thinking that this is a good way to transfer the infection and virus. So how can you bridge this gap? I think this question is definitely suit lens. Lah. So yeah. how's the people use your vending machine and then they might touch and then later on they go back and then they, they, they touch your eyes and mouth and then they get an infection. Like how you can go through this bridge? Wow. Well, I think we have to, you know, uh, because since we are not the one who manage the machines, uh, it's all our vending operator play the roles. Uh, in fact, we need to, you know, uh, let the people, since this, is, I think this is a very good feedback for us. Uh, to understand that uh, this is a consumer's uh, fear about the usage about the vending machines because eventually these are uh, touching might might also give a chance uh, but for us uh, we always play the te uh, technological role uh, what we will do is uh, we might came out a, a, a way to help uh, which is not even touch the vending machines they can buy from the vending machines uh, this is part of the secrets i'm not going to tell <laughs> trade secret uh, but this is uh, one of the way we will think about analyze how the consumer will look into our vending machines and we will uh, think about how we can innovate and help the vending operator to operate at the optimum uh, conditions but uh more importantly because you are handling your own business right so just take care of your own machines always sanitize it uh, uh you know uh, clean the necessary parts uh, that, that could actually reduce the chances lah. so this is a business lah. i mean nothing to do with much of with us but 
in fact, if you want to make your business good, you know, just attach with a sticker there, say that you are sanitized every day, people will start to instill a very good confidence over your, your, your we, we have a very good uh, relationship with you, which is a bonding. Yeah, uh, for me, la, for my personal, actually, uh, you might think that vending machine can uh, give you infections, but I always go tap out. So uh, go one day, actually, when I tap out a... Uh, uh, Manchang Kui in Penang, there is a very nice cake called Manchang Kui. And then when I'm waiting for my Manchang Kui, I saw another uh, buyer before me. He coughed. And then when he coughed, he, he closed his uh, mouth like this. <coughs> so after that, the people say, uh, Liang Kui Pan. So after that, he take the money by using his end and then he passed the money to the seller. So when I see, and then another seller said, Nah, your Manchang Kui. And then I ask, uh, Do you have e wallet? Because I don't want to take the money, uh, I mean, don't infect with the oh, seller. No, we don't have e-wallet, uh, only cash. Then I open my wallet, I only got 50 ringgit. So definitely I need to give the change, take back the change from her. So I'm like, so oh so my send, God. send me his location, I'll get my guys to go and talk to this guy. And make sure <laughs> it's hawker, la, but actually quite yeah, a lot. Yeah, we do hawkers, we do hawkers. Yeah. He have not on board. Maybe I need to talk to her. <laughs> so after that, I need the 50 ringgit and then I still need to get back my 40 ringgit class. Okay. So I already get the inspection. So I think food is a very necess- uh, it's very important during this crisis because a lot of the um, audience, uh, they mostly concerned about the food delivery. They will ask like, is it touch and go thing about to expand your payment line into other industries such as the food delivery? Uh, I can see a lot of comments, they say like Grab food, la, food panda, la, they got their own payment gateway. So of course, uh, we don't talk about Grab la. later, Grab sue us, I don't know. So talk about the food panda delivery eat and, and others delivery food. They ask like, can I use touch and go in others delivery food platform? I think this question is definitely for Ignatius. Well, uh, we are already with Deliver Eats. That's the that that's one of the food delivery company in Malaysia. Uh, I don't want to spill too much beans, but yeah, we 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 working. We already have a working relationship with Hungry, uh, Deliver Eats. Uh, we are in talks with the Makan, and I'll be very frank with you. We are also in talks with Food Panda. So uh, I think it's all about collaborations. It's all about smart partnerships, right? Uh, Grab name doesn't come out. Uh, well, well, we'll see how things goes, right? Uh, but at the moment, they are still also our competitor. But having said that, I always believe in if there is a win-win discussion, a win-win situation, I think everyone should sit on the table and let's be open about it. So, to us, I think to answer your question and to answer the the the, the one of the uh, viewers' question is that yes, we are working closely. We are already in a couple of the food delivery, and to be very frank, I think. Uh, it's just a matter of time before we get ourselves together uh, in partnership with Food Panda. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, there's actually quite a lot of questions, uh, but due to the time constraint, I cannot uh, answer everyone here. So the last question I would like to uh, choose is actually, uh, is Touch and Go confident enough to partner with more established logistic company and delivery companies to encourage the integration of your system to challenge the big player? Like a uh, big player, uh, like others. <laughs> so, uh, touch and go yeah. is a big player. <laughs> uh, uh, touch and go is actually the biggest player at the moment in in uh, in, in in the e wallet space. I think I think a simple question is yes, we are definitely confident and and in fact, again, like I said, we uh we have the kind of roadmap similar to what Alipay has, and and in that essence, and again, like I said, we I, I'm not just saying it because I'm the CEO of Touch and Go e wallet, but we are uh, we are having 10.5 million user base. We are the biggest in Malaysia of all the wallets, e-wallets in there. And uh, I think it's all about uh, win-win. It's all about a symbiotic relationship that we're going to strike with our partners. So when we go to the partners, it's not that we are a small guy. We are here to tell you, look, we've got 10.5 million eyeballs on us and still growing. And hence, working with any of the partners that is in play, that you can get to see the kind of value that we put on the table. At the same time, we also want to ensure that our user, our, our loyal users, get the whole range of benefits and whole range of products and services that we can actually work with as with a partner. So yeah, definitely, we, 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 here, we are here for the long run. We will be the only e-wallet, let's put it this way, in, in the long run for Malaysia. Yeah, um, both of the questions mostly focus on the e-wallet. Uh, last, last question, uh, this is the last question. So for others' question, maybe you can still uh, comment and later on we will have a person in charge to answer your questions. So uh, last question from Jeremy is, are the society and the end user ready for e-wallet vending machines? Because a vending operator might lose their business because the vending machines support e-wallet that not support cash and coin. So I think this question I'll hand to Lance. 
Okay, uh, we uh, started this uh, e-wallet flagship products, uh, which is uh, e-wallet vending machines uh, since last year, 2019, uh, around the August. Uh, I would say that uh, this partnership, I mean, uh, a partnership with a lot of uh, cashless uh, uh, system is part of the essential for us to move into a cashless society. Um, it, it could be one of the very uh, great channels for the futures. But of course, right now, a lot of people still asking about cash and coin. Um, but I have to be, gen I mean, uh, be frankly to tell that um, uh, cash and coin actually uh, experienced a lot of uh, I mean, uh, problems that uh, because we are from a vending industry, for the past five years, we understand that all the challenges the vending operator might experience or even the end users, uh, the change doesn't give back. But uh, with uh, fully adoption of the what we call the cashless uh, transactions, it's actually quite a seamless purchase experience for the end user and also good for the vending operator. So if you ask me, I, was, I would definitely uh, have raised my two hands to support for <laughs> cashless. Um, and right now I can say that it's a cultivate time a lot of things uh, a lot of things are actually in the in the process to adopt the uh, which is an e-wallet uh, but if it takes time eventually to you know move into a full scale of uh, e-wallets but uh, take this opportunity i mean currently a lot of people is already forced to you know uh, they, they they also started to in adopt more and more and this is this doesn't i mean doesn't have any things decrease at all it just keep on increasing so why not just right on the wave to grow together that that could be something a uh, very good to look at so in fact that uh, i would say that cash and coins is something necessary like a lot of people say that uh, cash is king in malaysia but uh, it will eventually it will uh, obsolete in the future yeah yep. today is a very fruitful day to hear from initius and lance both are the ceo of tng digital and technology so for those audience who comment e wallet vending remember to check your inbox especially the request inbox because some of the message will go into another inbox so if last day uh, you didn't receive any reply you can also text uh technology facebook page technology vending technology and also we would like to ask a favor you like and follow the facebook of touch and go e wallet and also technology so you won't miss any cashless society information in the future so thank you initiates and lens for finding your time with us thank so it's you. very grateful i can see a corporate and also a startup can work together to build a better ecosystem so thank you so much for all the audience staying with us so thank you so much everyone so sekian terima kasih and salam bahagia thank you thank you thank you thank you bye bye bye